And that was awfully quick. And we are live. Welcome, everyone, to yet another Dev Talk. I am your host, unfortunately your host, Stephen, also go by Slave to Machine. And today on the show, I have the utmost pleasure of talking to the developers of Kingdom. So what is Kingdom? Kingdom is a 2D resource gathering and building simulator. And God, I love the artwork. But before I start you know, going insane about that, I want to introduce the developers. So, Noyo and Licorice, please. Uh, Licorice, let's start with you. Please introduce yourself, sir. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Marco Bancal, and I'm Italian. I live in Iceland, and uh, I'm one of the developers of Kingdom. And Thomas? Yeah. Uh, I'm Thomas Vandenberg, and I'm the other developer. <laughs> and uh, the two of us are the team. So the whole team, the entire team. So yes. the art, the music, everything has been done by the two of you. Not the music. For the music, the we music. have uh, Amos Toy Tree. He's our musician. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, tell me a little bit about the history of Kingdom, because it's been. It it seems like it's been a little bit of time. It started as a as a, a the concept was first built in Flash, and. Yeah. Yeah. Kingdom was a flash game that I built as a kind of side project during uh, during my university, and um, its its reception when I had like released the flash game that was so good that um, that was kind of the thing for us to go off and and build the real game. And Marco sent me an email like, "Hey, do you want to build like an iOS port of Kingdom?" I was like, "Sure." And then that iOS port actually grew into what is now uh, the the PC game, and we still have to do the mobile game. <laughs> So first off, where where did the concept come from? Uh, what was the the inspiration to do Kingdom? Um, inspiration, not so much gameplay, but more inspiration, uh, as in graphics. I think is that I was just messing around with pixel graphics in uh, there's this Flash engine called Flixel, yeah, and um, I was kind of building like a little little experiment and then that grew into kingdom and the experiment had like little guys running around that were your citizens and grabbing coins and it was intended to be kind of a simulation that you could walk around in on the horse but not necessarily have a lot of influence on and that kind of still is what it's like in kingdom so what was what was the reason you decided to go with pixel uh, pixel art or voxel art um, I know flash flash games tend to be fairly cinematic, fairly animated in nature. Uh, I know pixels are also used. Do you just have something that, that pulls you toward pixels? Or what was the reason for that? Um, pixel art is an art style that you can kind of trial and error. If, if you're not like super educated as an artist, you can put down some pixels and see how it looks and then like get rid of some pixels and then you know kind of have your animation looping in the background and just constantly kind of tweak it as you go, even if you have no idea what you're doing. And that helps a lot, like making pixel art in Kingdom. And so after you were done uh, with the concept, uh, Marco came about. At, at what point did, well, first off, how did the two of you first meet? And at what point did he decide, yeah, this would be a, a wonderful project for me to work on? Um, well, we, we actually didn't meet until like, six months later we started working together something like that so as thomas said i, I just sent him an email I, we didn't know each other at all i just really liked the game and i thought it would be perfect for the ios market and uh, so i sent him the, that email and then we started working together and then i think we met the first time in the in the nordic game yeah i think yeah nordic game yeah. Uh, conference yeah because we won this grant, Nordic Game Program, which uh, helped us a lot to further develop the, the game. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> we didn't know each other at all. So, so essentially, because a lot of the people that, that tend to watch these interviews, they also either they tinker with game design or they want to get into game design. And even though we have so many different avenues in order to become designers and even publishers, which I'll ask a couple of questions about that in a second, uh, there's still this kind of stigma that you have to be part of a huge, you know, sprawling company in order to be able to develop games. Uh, so for two people that had never met each other before, 
uh, one created the concept as basically a university, uh, just tinkering essentially, and for another person to out of nowhere see that concept and decide, hey, I want to join in with that, that that's some pretty impressive camaraderie. Uh, so that, that being said, how was the experience porting it from Flash to iOS, which is historically a not so fr a Flash friendly environment? Uh, yeah, we didn't. We we just basically started from scratch on on iOS. Uh, so everything was done in uh, Objective C using an engine called Cocos 2D. Uh, but then, um, yeah, we decided to move to Unity after winning the the grant because we thought, okay, maybe we should actually publish it on PC, Mac, and Linux as well. Uh, so yeah, we just moved to Unity, but uh, we we didn't do anything with the Flash code. We just used it as a reference. But uh, we yeah, used the wasn't... assets. Yeah, we of course we used a lot of assets, but yeah. But yeah, there yeah. is though like there is a there is probably a uh, uh, direct way to port Flash to iPhone because every once in a while this clone of the Flash game pops up on the App Store. Like, you know, some somebody from China or somebody from somewhere else will just rip it and put it on the store and will take it down again. And this happens every every couple months. Um, so it's probably doable, like, just to port the Flash game directly to, to iOS if you're not worried about performance or anything like that. So it was was... Going from concept to the final product, was there anything that didn't quite make it? Was there any kind of major stumbling blocks going from the original Kingdom uh, to the release that we have on i the release on iOS, and then from there to the release on PC, Mac, and Linux? Well, we we haven't actually released on iOS yet. Like we started on working on iOS, but then we decided to do PC first. So. That, that has not happened yet. A lot of people have said that the iOS game, like, should it be simpler, should it be shorter? Because I've heard people play seven hours on the current game. That might be a bit long for a mobile game. <laughs> so some things might uh, get changed up a little bit for the mobile release. I think from the Flash concept game to this, what we have out now, that went pretty well. I mean, there's a backlog of, of an enormous backlog of stuff that we just couldn't put in, or, or for, for other reasons, like you know, either time-wise or just it didn't work in the game. Um, like what, if I may ask? Oh, there is so much content that we wanted to do that, but that we didn't do. You know, like of course, if we had the possibility, we would have twenty different types of units, and I don't know. No, well, probably we wouldn't actually. Um, can I mention a, a specific thing? Let me think. Well, we had the we were playing around with the idea of having different game endings, uh, where you could trigger different kind of events to happen that you would then have to survive, and then the game ended after that. So there would be like different kind of apocalyptic events that you could trigger, but you could survive them, and that would make you win the game. And those didn't make it in. Yeah. So, so to or, a point, it'd be like a a, a pixelized kind of choose your own adventure style novel where you basically <laughs> you're. you're you're building your kingdom, but if you go too far into the forest, what you get attacked by rabid wolves or trolls, or uh, you you already yeah, get attacked by there is, you already you know, get attacked it's... by like flying plants, or at least that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> yeah, the the Venus flytrap uh, type of enemies. Yeah, shrimps. 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 Well, that's they're, what they're, some other people have called them. <laughs> uh, they're really big for shrimps, but True. but no, go ahead. What what would you like? What what specifically would you have liked to have put in the game that you just couldn't from this backlog? Well, I don't, there's okay one one all the, one other very specific thing that we always had planned was fire, um, like being able to set things on fire, like having your catapults fire oil barrels that you could then ignite and that kind of mechanic. That's of course very cool. That's just just adding. But now that the game is out and we've been getting a lot of feedback, it's also like it kind of changes your vision like it shows you what's needed to to make the game play better and not every type of content that you add is going to make the game better so i think from now on if we add something it really has to serve a purpose to you know improve the current gameplay and not just be an extra content or an extra unit it has to fix a problem because there are, there are some problems <laughs> and of course the the steam community is more than vocal uh, about any problems oh uh, yes I mean, were, were there any were there any pieces of deconstructive criticism that 
kind of stuck with you? Because a lot of the people that have criticisms about the game, almost every single one of them I've noticed have said the exact same thing. Uh, if they give a negative review, I wanted to review this positively, but, or I, I hate the fact that I have to say something negative about it. So yeah. even, even if there are issues, there are so many aspects of the game that kind of resonate with people that almost all of them would give this a, a super positive rating. But were there any specific criticisms that you think are, are founded or any that are unfounded? I've even seen people claiming that the game is too hard. Oh, yeah, I think the game can be hard, especially if there are certain parts of it that you haven't discovered yet that make it very difficult for you to, like, you know, certain strategies that can make your life easier. Um, I think a central theme in a lot of the reviews is kind of what the game gets like when you survive for a long time. Let's say you survive past 50 or 60 nights. Um, that's not really where the game shines, but that's also in our, in our heads, it, that's not really... Um, it wouldn't be a very usual thing for people to get that far. We thought it wouldn't be. Like, we didn't think you would have a kingdom that spans, like, the entire map from bridge to bridge or that you would actually live that long. And that's kind of where the game is showing its, its cracks, you know? And this is something that we, that we might want to fix, that we might want to work on somehow. But it's a, it's a very, very... Um, uh, it's very much woven into the rest of the gameplay. So kind of fixing that is not just, like, a one-button one thing that we can do. So, so basically, people are breaking the game by being good at it. it is what yes, I'm understanding. exactly. <laughs> that is exactly what it is. Yeah, and that was the same with the Flash game. Just now, we made the same mistake, or I made the same mistake, like, underestimating how good people get at it. So that being said, uh, the gameplay is incredibly hands-off. In fact, to to harken back to an older game from I think the mid '90s that I used to play ridiculously long. Uh, it was a game called Majesty, where it was a uh, isometric view. You had control of a cursor. You could throw money at the problems or, or throw money for upgrades, and that was it. You had no control over your armies. You had no control over your townspeople. They just did whatever they wanted to do. And so the the joke could be made that this game is a very hands-off approach. It's a very capitalistic idea. Throw money at the problem and it will go away. Uh, was, was that kind of the, the incentive on this one? Why did you choose such a, a, a passive interaction for the player, aside from you know, paying for things? Oh, yeah, you go yeah. ahead. <laughs> it's your field. Um, well, it started off as kind of an experiment. You know, like, let's, let's make somebody walk around in this world and then give them one action, which is throwing a coin. And then at some point, it just becomes, you know, like almost a challenge. Like, can we fit the entire gameplay into this one action? And, um, of course, that makes it, by definition, super easy to pick up because you only have to learn one key. If you, if you give someone a game, all you need to tell them is, like, press this button. And, and they, they won't go, like, what, like, they won't forget what buttons they're supposed to use and all that kind of stuff. So it makes it kind of the definition of easy to pick up hard to master or something because everything you learn is through the game's rules and not through what's on your keyboard or what's happening on your controller or whatever. So um, uh, you, you had mentioned about how people are, are effectively breaking the game by, by being good at it. What, what, are, what exactly are the limitations of the, the current game? What is it about that that is, is causing such trouble? Is it is it an issue with, with the gameplay mechanics? Is it an issue with just the the style of the game, the coding? What is it that, that makes the game breakable by basically in you know gauntlet gauntletizing your gameplay, going to like 80, 90 nights or so? Do you mean on the on the on the player's end? Like what is it that allows them to break it? Or do you mean why why doesn't the game like it when you do that? <laughs> well, kind of, it's kind of a bit of both. Uh, obviously, it's not just gameplay that kind of uh, brings it to a crawl. There, there's, I would imagine, something to be done about that in the back end, in, in, the, in the coding. So I was wondering if, if both of you could kind of elib uh, elaborate on what could be well, done or what, what's causing it and then what are the fixes for it. I mean, there's the performance side of things of course, where if there's that many enemies or that many units and things will slow down and we can, of course, like optimize the AI or like optimize that. That's, that's not easy, but like it's clear what you can do on that front. But there's 
more like the gameplay front where if your kingdom is that big and people want to expand, like they want to build bigger walls and everything, but then you end up having to walk so far up and down. So then we have to kind of discourage people from building their kingdom that big that it becomes less fun for them to have to walk around, like have to, have to manage a kingdom of that size. Um, and also I think aesthetically, we put a lot of effort into the forest, like making that look nice with like the light rays falling in and having all kinds of different plants and little fireflies. But then once you cut all of that down, then you have this barren field. So I think even aesthetically, just just making expanding your kingdom that big is like it doesn't work well in the game. And it's something that we kind of anticipated, like Marco said at some point, like we need something that, you know, there there has to be something in your kingdom as well, like houses or other things that replace all the detail that gets lost in the forest. But then it ended up not making it into the game because it's not a functional thing. It will be purely a decorative thing. So, I mean, that that all being said, what what more can be done? If you were to add houses and, and things of that nature, would it just be in the background where it can be attacked? Or would, would the player have some kind of interaction with them? Basically, is there a chance for some kind of in-game economy out of curiosity? Or is it always going to be the very, I don't want to say simplistic, but it, it's it's a very comforting game almost to just kind of, I, I guess I want to say zone out and just build your kingdom as much as you can and then wait for nightfall and then hope you make it to morning. Uh, but is there any intention of ever expanding the gameplay? Mm, what, what do you mean by in-game economy? Well, by... Obviously, you can pay for hammers, you can pay for bows, but are, is there a, ever a chance for, say, like an actual, a, a, a bigger income? Because right now, from what I experienced, if you send someone out and they, you know, they kill creatures or whatnot, you walk by them and they drop a bunch of money. Uh, is, is there ever any intention on, on expanding on any of that? Hmm. Or, or maybe even just building a bank so that when you get too much money, it doesn't just spill out of your purse. That's a good one. That's one of those things in the backlog, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, I personally, when I was playing the game, I found that most of the difficulty came from the fact that I would be generating money when I just didn't need the money, or and I, I felt like I would be losing that. But then night would come my defenses would get totally obliterated and then the next morning I would have I, I would be racing essentially from from one side to the other to try and rebuild as fast as I could while everything was hammering at me so is that is that something that you hear a lot of complaints about uh, in refer referring to the well the game's too hard type of thing yeah well it's not Pretty, I would say. Like, in a, if you had a, a perfectly balanced game, then you would have to, like, you would need every coin that you get, and and you would be able to meaningfully spend every coin that you get. Like, currently, it still gets hard, even though like all the guys are like throwing mountains of money at you. But um, it it doesn't. I would say it's not. It's not. It doesn't feel so good if if they are like wasting money, but you still need money at some point. There's like kind of a mismatch between how much money is generated and then when you can use it and where. Like you said. Um, but that's really tricky to balance in this game because there's all these feedback loops. Like, you know, if you have more archers, then they will hunt more bunnies. So there will be fewer bunnies to, like, spawn because there's, like, kind of this... Okay, I'm not really explaining that well. The point is it's really tricky to balance. Of course, that goes for any game. I don't think that this game is any special. But because of the simulation loop, it, it does tend to have amplified effects if one thing is out of balance. True. And I, I find that all of my archers are pretty much have no aim whatsoever. They're like stormtroopers in Star Wars, in <laughs> my experience. W was that on, on purpose, or is it just totally up to random chance? What, what is it that... Is there any way I can make them actually hit the targets they're aiming at, is, I guess, the question I'm trying to ask. Because that was my most frustrating point. There uh, is. I, there is? There is. Yeah. But you're not going to say? Nope. <laughs> and anybody in the chat that will be like, dude, of course. Probably someone will come up with it. <laughs> yeah. No, there is a so, way. Yeah. There is a way. Okay. Uh, I, it's one of those things where I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to give anybody tips. They can figure it out on their own. But just to be totally frank, I was able to get to maybe, maybe day 15. And yet every single time it was purely through random luck. 
Um, <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? How, how did you get lucky? In Honestly, it, it, was, it was a situation where I would lose the crown and I would just immediately dart for it. Oh, oh yeah. That was, it, it, it seemed like I would lose the crown, I'd pick it up, I'd lose it again, I'd pick it up. So I was just basically just following the crown outside of the kingdom the entire time. You had a time. few of these like little battles with the trolls trying to grab your crown. Yeah, that didn't, it didn't really end well. I'm a terrible king. Why, could I have a bodyguard? Is that a possibility at, at some point? It seems kind of weird that a king would walk around with no, no well, honor we, guard. We had anything. a bodyguard. The king used to have a bodyguard. Used to have? Yes. <laughs> and then we removed it. Can you please put him back? Maybe. <laughs> um, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you got to the knights. The elite? No. Okay. No. But I'm not spoiling <laughs> much. I think much. Yeah, most of the people probably know about this, but yeah, most uh, of them. The but yeah, not me. <laughs> <laughs> the original uh, purpose of the knights was to actually uh, always follow you and defend mm. you, and you could use them also to attack. But um, it didn't feel good enough. The the, the implementation and, and just. The gameplay, so we decided to change the role of the knights into one something the, else. One of the issues is, yeah. One of the issues would be, of course, that the knights are walking; they're on foot, so they're a lot slower than you are. Yeah. And yeah, everybody they, will say, "Well, why don't you put them on horses?" But it's not like we have like an infinite army of artists that can just crank out horses whenever we need them. So. True. True. I I did kind of feel bad for my horse at at one point because it would run. I would run all the way into the forest to the point where it was almost pitch black, and then I would start running back, and the poor thing, I think it might have had asthma because it would, could barely get back to town. So just kind of trudging back in. Uh, that being said, is there, a, is there any intention of ever having the king be able to defend himself in any way? Because at, at this point, he basically is just kind of Aww. like that cursor in majesty to me. But then again, maybe that's because yeah. I'm a terrible king. Many people ask I don't... for this, but I don't. I mean, I think me and Thomas we are on the same page, and I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I, I it would think detract it, uh, from the experience because it would be too easy. Because we have no button left <laughs> to use. No, yeah, and also I think it would become mm -hmm. another game, mm -hmm. a different game. Uh, and I also like the idea that you know you're the king, you're the guy with the money, and that's why you make you know you make other people do the stuff for you. You don't want to get your you know dirty and just fight or whatever, right? Or build stuff. You just pay I, other people. I, I, I like this that. principle. I think it should should stay like this, but. Yeah. So was it some kind of social commentary just on the sly, or is it just it? It does make for good gameplay because there are so many games out there that are legitimately just hack and slash. But this is this is a very passive, almost in almost like a zen-like experience if, if your you know, defenses work. Mine didn't, but they do. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know if there's a social commentary in there. Uh, the enemies are called the greed, so maybe there is some, you know, hint that uh, that it's not all good if you just want to gather more and more and more and more gold. But because uh, it, all not they explicit. basically want is your crown, so yeah. What are they going to do with the crown after that? I mean, the king can't rule without a crown, but he still has a, a a kingdom. But the crown is essentially the symbol of of power, right? So once you lose the crown, you lose everything. That's that's basically how it works, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've already humiliated myself saying about how I only got to like 15 or, or 16. What What is your that's, personal that's record? That's I get, but I cheat. Well, you can do that, though. Uh, Marco, I'm sure you've played the game. Or is it a situation where you've seen it so often you just can't bring yourself to play it? Yes, it's that. <laughs> I I don't play much, and uh, even when I was playing the game much, I I, I just suck at it. Uh, I really, I I'm, I'm super bad. I'm I usually bad in in uh, with the uh, strategy games, and 
I think there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a big stra- strategic component in this game, and you need really to understand it to to be able to win and and play well. And yeah, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I suddenly I probably, feel yeah, so last, much better. Until, yeah, I, I would last probably until day 15 or or 20 or something like that. Um, yeah, nothing compared yeah, to that can finish it in seven days stuff like that yeah which is crazy 11 i think is the record i saw somebody really yeah uh, the, yeah but i think they do use some exploits mm, you know okay. not actual cheats but like things you can do that regarding like saving and loading the game at the right times that can give you an advantage so were there there speaking of exploits and bugs and glitches because i'm i'm always a fan of those uh were there any during development that just were totally game breaking or were there any that you looked at and you went that's kind of funny let's keep that in there um there's a lot of stuff still in there that's not supposed to work this way but it does <laughs> think of something there's a few of those right marco where like we even just left it in there even if it wasn't intentionally um, if it wasn't supposed yes. to work that way but um, i'm not sure if i can come up with any no not sure, but for sure, yes. Oh, oh, I know one. The one with okay. the catapult friendly fire. Oh, um, there was a point that's where my favorite. Cat- yeah. yeah, if you were standing next to the catapult and it would fire, it would hit you and, and basically your crown would fly along with the boulder, like out of your walls, straight on top of the head of an enemy that would lose you the game. Um, friendly I, fire. I, I kind of like that one. So that one's not in the game, yeah, unfortunately. Too. People, A lot of people did like it. But it is like it is one of those things that you had no way of kind of predicting that, and also a lot of people wouldn't even notice that that was what's going on. Like it's hectic in battle, and then suddenly your crown flies off. So we did end up fixing it. We can unfix it if people want to. <laughs> I kind of like that idea. Let's let's patch the game and put the bug back in. Put the bug back in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it works for it works for AAA uh, publishers, <laughs> right? And devs. So why not, right? Exactly. Uh, a- any other wonderful catapult bugs? Like maybe the horse goes flying off into the into the forest or something? Well, there were crazy bugs during development, but there were we, some... we fixed those, I hope. Yeah, there's some crazy moonwalking physics bugs going on. Oh, yeah. I think like sometimes your guys can get grabbed by a, by a flying monster, but then they escape somehow, but the flying monster is kind of still holding them, like the physics is still holding them, so they kind of end up flying or glitching through the air or like walking backwards. That kind of stuff happens here and there. Yes. So, Marco, what was it about the game that when you saw it, and we'll get to the the Q and A in just a bit because I can see that there's a lot of really good questions in that channel. Uh, what is it about the game when you first saw it that you thought I I need to work on this, <laughs> I need to be a part of this? Uh... I think that the main thing was actually the, the brilliant gameplay, as in like this this combination of a very simple interface and mechanics with this deep strategy. It just uh, it really impressed me. I was completely addicted to the game, and of course the the pixel art was also very very inspiring. So I, I saw a lot of potential in this game, and that's why. And I sent that email. Yeah, rightly, <laughs> rightly so. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the main thing, and I, I still think this is a kind of a unique uh, game in in this regard, as in like this this very special combination. I don't see many games that have such a simple interface, but still they are so deep. Actually, this and- this version is a bit more interface wise, a bit more. Co- complicated let's say it's not that simple as the original one but we really try to you know keep it as simple as possible okay and so when when you guys got together you started working on it and then you guys went into you you've been published by raw fury games which tell us how how that experience was you know two guys getting hooked up with a publisher that that proclaims on their site that they want to unpublish games, which I'm still not 110% certain as to what that means. But 
So how did how did you guys first get involved with them, and then what exactly does unpublish mean? Yeah, okay. Uh, so for for us, it was very easy because um, the CEO of the of Raw Fury was my former boss. I was uh, he's Icelandic, so I was working in a company uh, here, um, a game a game studio, and I worked there for a few years, and then he moved to Sweden at some point and after a while while I was already working on Kingdom then we we talked about this and he he really liked Kingdom in general so we started talking about maybe doing something for the game but they didn't have a company yet but he he already had this idea of this radical different publishing company and that's why they call it unpublished um and then they slowly, you know, started with this and uh, everything just, uh, every piece just uh, fell into the right place. And they they started and we started with them. So we are, uh, Kingdom is the first uh, the game they publish. And um, yeah, so I, I, in general, unpublishing, I think what they mean is they want to go um, against against the, the normal trend in, in the publishing work in the game industry. Um, you know, especially in the indie, for indies, it's really, really hard to find good deals with publishers. Uh, classic publishers, big publishers, they they have incredibly bad deals, <laughs> and you cannot really do anything uh, about that. Um, so they their mission is basically to change this somehow, and. Uh, our experiences. And so, been were there any other publishers that you were kind of looking into, or was it just was it just uh, Fury? We maybe spoke with a couple of other publishers at some point, but we really liked the idea, you know, to to work with them, and uh, the the contract was really good, so we just went with them. And I and I knew the people uh, at least, you know, Jonas was the CEO and I, I really I trust him 100%. So yeah, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Okay. And this this might be a little, you know, you might not be able to say this, which is totally respectable, but uh, can you say anything about how many units have been sold of the game? Um, how many copies are floating out there right now? Yeah. Can, can we check Steam Spy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Does, we can say if you want, mm-hmm. Thomas. If you want. Uh, yeah, I think um, Steam Spy has about sixty thousand at the moment. Kind of fluctuates because there's refunds and stuff like that. Sure. But, so, uh, I mean, was was that something that, considering this started as a as a, a almost like a personal project and became a, a commercial release, is it kind of flabbergasting to see it out there and see that many copies have been sold? And, yeah. and that many people are playing it. Totally, it's so amazing. Ha- yeah, yeah. It is. So, uh, I it's, think. Yeah. When it's sold, this when when there's this many players, you there's also like so much feedback uh, coming at you, and like it's it really kind of there's no way to to. Uh, I don't know. It's like uh, it it. It's overwhelming, but in a good way, of course. Like, it, you can always relate back to like, oh my god, we're we're actually selling this game. Like, we've done what so many people want to do, which is make an indie game and sell it. And and there's always kind of this base level that you can think of. Like, this game is has already been successful, so that's kind of a very um, peaceful uh, peaceful thing to keep in mind. Like, whenever any any other kind of stress gets to you, it's like, okay, but we're doing good. You know, we made it. We made an awesome game. So to put you on the spot for a moment, and again, this is a question that you can you can brush off, but since he's also on the call, so considering that it was it was Marco's insistence that it be ported to iOS, and then you guys decided to go to P, uh, just PC, Mac, and Linux, would this game ever have been released if it was just you? Out of curiosity, me? Yeah. No. No, not at all. No. No. I don't think so. It was, it was, I, I didn't, I had made something that I was proud of, 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it was out there, and as far as I was concerned, this was a finished thing, and I was, you know, also like looking into other things. And it was really Marco's idea to kind of pick this up. And at that point, it was it would have been a port, so it would have been the same game for iPhone. But I think we discovered together that there was really more potential in this, like Marco said before, that we could uh, realize by doing another like desktop game first. So if anybody's losing sleep on getting killed repeatedly, it's Marco's fault, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, for this game. Otherwise, maybe those people would still be playing the Flash game. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of people, there are a lot of people that have been playing it, a lot of people that are loving it, and we're going to get into the questions that have been asked in the chat. So if I stumble, I apologize. So the first question is, uh, what are the devs' thoughts about maybe little... Uh, automation when the kingdom gets bigger, maybe paying tax collectors from the farmers or paying people that could regirt regirt the people in tents. I believe the question I believe the question is asking specifically, would there ever be the intention of just automated economy, which I think we kind of touched on. But is that something that's getting asked a lot? Marco? Yes, yes. And uh, we actually talked many times about this. I think there was an idea of having the the knights. Uh, one of one of the yeah one of the tasks of the knights would be to go around the kingdom during the day and collect taxes from the citizens, and then <clears throat> either you would just uh, meet the knight and get all the money, or he would put all the coins into the chest at the at the castle. But I don't remember exactly. The, the discussion, but we realized that maybe it wasn't the best idea ever. So, I think specifically why the knights don't do it is that they don't really have time to walk up and down and actually do the tax yeah. collection. But yeah. we did want to have also when you have these kind of like let's reply to the question first. When you have these kind of roles that involve automation of certain tasks, then you get even more strong feedback loops. You know, like you could have a part of the kingdom that just func- functions automatically. And that, for example, gives you such an enormous income that it really like kind of pushes the game out of balance. So it's as soon as things run by themselves without any influence, then then you, this is really tricky to balance. Of course, that doesn't make it um, impossible to do, and I think it would be fun to kind of alleviate some of the more boring tasks. But the other question is, what comes in the place of those? Like, what what do you have time for now that you don't have to collect taxes anymore? Um, but I guess there's enough to do at the moment. So. It's not, it's not out of the question. So actually following up on that, uh, another question is, uh, is there any possibility of, say, a new game plus after you finish the normal that would be harder, uh, something that unlocks uh, new types or kinds of enemies that might have different bonuses or, or weapons that might have different bonuses, things that boost morale, makes your troops stronger, anything like that? It's also an option, actually one that we have already talked about to, to have this, you know, where you restart. And there's a, there, even earlier there were different uh, discussions about having a way to, to leave your kingdom and, and start somewhere else, kind, these kind of themes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, again, it's, this is something that is um, maybe more likely to happen than many, many other ideas. <laughs> Um, there is one problem, though, that I've been having personally um, with thinking about these kind of things. There's a bunch of content in the forest, right? Like things you can find. And the thing you just mentioned is you restart and then you have another kind of content at your disposal. But that means that there are certain, that there should need to be certain pieces of content, like upgrades or things that are not essential, that you can do without in the first run, but then in the second run you do have them. And then they're like nice extra. Um, I'm just afraid that if we do that, then these these extra things are going to become essential for certain player strategies, and they're going to be like, why don't we get this upgrade in the base game? Like, why do you only get those in the plus game? Like, this kind of, you know, I'm kind of struggling with that, like how to solve that in, in a nice, nice way that doesn't feel unfair that you don't have certain things in the first game. Imagine the, okay, I'm going to spoil it. You can find a statue in the forest that upgrades your archer so that they shoot better. There you go. This is an essential part of many player strategies. Like you, you almost cannot defend beyond a certain point without your archers like hitting their targets. If this was an extra bonus, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> sorry. If this was a bonus thing, 
that wouldn't appear in every run of the game, that means that you know some some types of strategy are completely crippled because you don't have that you know that piece of content. So it's tricky if you have yeah if the different things appear in different runs. Point. <laughs> So basically, it's a situation where, yeah, but no, it it. So there's no real smooth way to incorporate anything new that's not already in the game. But what about the idea of maybe future patches? Maybe when you bring the catapult glitch back, because I would imagine that would be like a thousand new sales or a hundred thousand new sales. <laughs> to bring back the catapult glitch. Bring back the catapult glitch. So that's like one yes. line of code. Um. Well, anything that we add, we have to do it with care, you know. We have to make sure that it's added in a nice way, that we add it with, while preserving the rest of the gameplay and not just cramming stuff in for the sake of cramming stuff in. So. Mm. But we want to. Like, we are, we are planning this kind of stuff out. Like, we, we kind of focus on bugs first and then we're going to think about what kind of content we can add. Um, yeah. So, from start to finish, another question. Uh, how many hours went into the development of this game? What were your favorite stages of development? So I guess that also includes the Flash version way back when uh, to now. I think uh, one million hours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it felt like uh, we've been working on this forever. So yeah. Uh, but so well, when I when I. When we started working together, I think uh, this was basically two years ago. So we could say it's 24 months, mm. um, basically full time. Maybe not exactly in the beginning. I, I, at least me, I wasn't working on it full time. But uh, yeah. But then more than full time at some point. Yeah. Then it became overtime <laughs> all the time. <laughs> so yes, maybe the average is full time. Uh, but yeah, for Thomas, it's probably a bit more since I know, it took it took you what one year to develop the flash. I think about a year, but even yeah. the first pixel animation of the horse dates back two years before the flash came. But that's just, so, that was just so best guesstimate, like two years and a million extra hours is yes. essentially yes. what I'm hearing. Two years yeah. of full time. That's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So another question, how psyched are you with the massive response you've gotten? Press coverage from IGN, PC Gamer, and of course, OP Noobs. We have a review on the site. Go check it out. Uh, and over a thousand reviews on Steam. When, when it was released, were you anticipating any of this at all? No. I, did, did you think it would be <laughs> this much of a... It, it, let's call it a success. I mean, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, it is. Yeah, of course. No, personally, I, I, I didn't think we would get... We were here. hanging out on Skype, like the five of us, together with Raw Fury. And uh, when we launched, we just hung out on Skype, like, the whole evening. And, and I think everybody was having, like, dinner in front of the Skype and drinking beers and, like, kind of, yeah. Yes. That was... Yeah, we were kind of celebrating as, as we saw, like, how, how the reaction was, like, coming up on sites and stuff like that. It was really cool. Yeah. But I think uh, uh, I, I I felt like uh, this would be it would, would become a success maybe a week before launch because we had the pre-order uh, the pre-sale on Steam and Raw Fury did a fantastic job job of marketing and PR so there were already yeah. a lot of. Uh, um, streams on Twitch and on YouTube, big YouTubers playing the game. And then there I think I realized, okay, this might actually be very big. <laughs> but of course, until, you know, we actually launched, we, we weren't sure. But before that week, though, I had no idea. You know, it, it was just a big question mark, as it usually is with games. You never know. You might just, you know, be no one there and just sell maybe, I don't know, 100 copies and that's it. Bye-bye. You never know. So It's been very, very exciting and um, a bit overwhelming as well, I would say. So as part of that question, part of the follow-up is, so what does this mean uh, for your, for the future of this partnership? Will you guys be 
continuing to work together on other projects? Will you kind of go your separate ways? Will you still maintain Kingdom? And will you be staying with Fury uh, as a publisher for the future? Um, we... <laughs> So, so we will definitely totally on the spot right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so most of these most of these questions is um, that we'll, we'll have to see about that. Um, but I can tell for sure that we are going to support Kingdom. We're doing it right now, um, mm -hmm. and that's gonna it's gonna stay like that through releases on like the future platforms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we'll we'll stick with Rough Fury for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. they they are like an integral part of this. So yeah. Don't don't be like you don't have to be afraid that we're just gonna like drop this game and like vanish. No, no, no. Because that seems to be common with any any games whatsoever nowadays, uh, be it indie or AAA or even kind of middle of the road type of things. So for the foreseeable future, there will be more Kingdom stuff. Right? Yeah, and I'm I mean maybe it's just because we're such a small team that we have a lot of bugs and we are fixing them now. But I see a lot of games that are out there that have been out there for years, and they're like patch 1.01. .01. They release with you know one patch. I'm like, how do they do it? Like, don't they feel the urge to fix everything that's wrong? But maybe that's not the most economical decision. <laughs> yeah, I, as as someone that hasn't touched a line of code in in nearly a, a decade or more, yeah, mm -hmm. I. It, it just it it has always boggled me when a game gets released to either critical acclaim or middling acclaim, and yet there are aspects of the game we're not going to name publishers, but we could, uh, <laughs> and we're not going to name developers, but we could uh, that have released games in this past year or so that have been coming out and they've been coming out almost like half finished, where the game gets pushed out to hit a release date, and then the day one patch comes out as well. So what, what, are you, what is your take on that? What do you think it is that, that causes that? Is it just economics? Is it, is it some kind oh, of marketing thing? No, I see that happening. Like they, they aim for release and then, I mean, programming stuff is really complicated, especially if you have a lot of people. So then they just have kind of this feature set that they're aiming for release and then, and then they can't change anything about that maybe month or weeks in advance because that's just, you know, what they're aiming for and then something turns out to be wrong and they can do a hot patch depending on like what the risk is and it's a mess. It's a mess between two people. I can't imagine how you would do this with 50 people coding that is. So it's probably just a matter of you know, one team doesn't know what the other team is doing. One team might be on one side of the country. Another one might be on the other side of the globe. That kind of issue perhaps. Yeah. And, and just, you know, I think, Somebody, somebody just like uh, made a little uh, comparison once, and he said like how many hours the game runs at on computers of the developer versus how many hours it runs on computers by players. Like, but how many hours it runs? It's run by players. It's like a million times more than they could ever do testing internally. So it's unavoidable that new bugs are gonna pop up. And uh, to me, if they do a day one patch, then it just shows that they're dedicated, that they're willing to like get in there on the first day. And fix as much stuff as they can. Of course, day one DLC is a different thing. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so that being said, uh, will there be any DLC for Kingdom in the future? Other than the soundtrack, uh, which is wonderful, by the way. Thanks. And uh, I'll tell Amos you said that. I'll show him the interview. Um, I think what we, um, what we decided is to have Every every piece of new content that we make, we just put it into the into the base game. I don't think Kingdom is also the kind of game that, like I said before, if we make some new content, we want it to fit nicely with the whole game, and we want it to be something that solves a, an existing problem. It makes no sense to release that as DLC. It's like the game is broken in a way, and here we have this awesome new piece of content that fixed some issues, but you don't get it unless you pay. Like, I mean, that's you know, you wanna. We want to improve this game as a whole and not have like separate pieces that you can either take out or put back in, depending on the size of your wallet. And so one of the most common questions, uh, what would you change in the game if you had the knowledge and experience after release? So I think, I think the question might be something to the effect of if you were to go back and address it, you know, hindsight being twenty twenty. is there anything that happened during the release that you wish you could have nailed before it was released? Mm. 
not sure. <laughs> I think that's the hardest question stuff, that's been asked. But yeah. yeah. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't try out all the stuff that turned out not to work, you know? But that's <laughs> such a, like, of course not. <laughs> like, there's so many ways that the game used to be that just were worse. And then, of course, we wouldn't have gone, like, through all those particular phases to arrive at the current game. But that's super hypothetical. Like, that's never going to happen. We had to go through those phases where it didn't work and we fixed stuff and then, yeah, you know? So congratulations to the person that asked that question. You broke the devs. I hope you're happy. <laughs> yeah. Speechless. Yeah, that that's impressive. Uh, but all that all that being said, it is a, a gorgeous game. Even though it showed me very clearly that I should not rule a country, I should not even rule a lake, uh, let alone a country. Uh, it is one of those games where you can play it constantly, and you're going to die. You're going to die a lot. It's going to piss you off, but you're going to want to try harder next time. So, if, if, yeah, and, and it has hit it in spades. And yes, I am not royalty material. I'm more rogue, thank you very much. Uh, but all that being said, the game has been released. It's on Steam yeah. right now. Go get it. Uh, it is $9.99, but you should really buy the soundtrack. Actually, you should wait until it's not on sale so that you can give them all the money you've got because they deserve it. <laughs> And uh, as to the, the winner of the question, uh, God, you know, you, I think the guy that broke the devs is kind of the winner. Um, all the questions were fantastic, but I, I think the one that really, that, that really made them speechless and, and killed them, I think that's the one that's got to win. Um, sure, that that yeah. being said, any, any parting thoughts, guys? Uh, what, is, what, is, what is next on the table? I mean, I know you're going to be supporting Kingdom for the foreseeable future, but... Is there anything else that we should keep an eye out? Mm, not sure. <laughs> there um, are going to be... I think there are going to be some fixes, like some cool stuff coming up um, pretty soon in, in one of the upcoming patches. But then again, I can't say because we are not entirely sure how we're going to kind of shape those. But... Uh, we're going to come up with some content sooner rather than later. It's super vague, sorry. Yes. So there will be a content update, but we don't know when and what. <laughs> okay, that sounds perfectly fine. When when the developers aren't even sure, you know that's going to be fun. Uh, but that being said, uh, Noyo and Licorice, thank you so much for being here, taking time out of your schedules. Uh, I cannot say this enough. I am absolutely pleased to see that Kingdom is doing so well. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what what happens in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for having this. It was fun. Yeah, of course. And of course, to, to plug our, our own stuff, uh, you can check out the game's review on opnoobs.com. You can check us out every single day on Twitch here. You're on the channel, so why am I telling you this? Uh, for OP Noobs, I'm Steven saying bye and enjoy the game. <laughs>